Hey guys, how's it going? Um, okay, so the media analysis that you guys have due uh, on Thursday night asks you to answer these questions. So it wants you to draw out the key idea or concept that you want to illustrate from one or more of the readings. Uh, it wants you to ans um, answer how does the media text that you've chosen illustrate one or more of these concepts. Um, and then finally, it asks you to explain, so what? Um, this prompt will provide for you a draft of what is required as part of the final version of the, excuse me, of the poster, the pitch. So remember that the poster is asking for not only the image itself, but also a 400 to 800 word pitch where you argue how the media you selected illustrates the concept that you chose. In addition, the pitch will help uh, drive the visual representation in the poster. So if this were a regular face-to-face -face class, you, the pitch is the thing that you would perform during the poster session uh, in conversation with an audience, but in the absence of that audience, we'll do everything alphanumerically. So this is just a quick uh, little overview of the way that we can use revision, um, again, a key component of writing process. Writing process, of course, is a key component of um, successfully persuading audiences of the interestingness or effectiveness of the things that you are communicating, um, but if you'd like a, a refresher on process, uh, here is this little clip from uh, Woven Text uh, that I signed last week. So again, process um, is a thing that you develop for your own effective and efficient processes for research, uh, collaborating, planning, drafting, reviewing, editing, revising, proofreading, and publishing. Uh, so there's no one font, there's no one uh, set process, but rather different types of processes uh, that you need to develop individually to uh, use uh, according to different writing contexts. So again, say for example, this is my uh, PD3. So I answered in the first question, um, PD3, sorry about that. Um, what's the key concept or idea um, that I've drawn from the readings? Um, and so um, I say, you know, Cohen argues how fictional representations of the future shape choices um, in response to apocalypse, that he argues anticipating a sudden and totalizing effect to uh, life on Earth elicits a variety of responses. Some people um, are resigned, other people respond by, um, producing archives, um, and then go into uh, his critique of archives, right? So while these collections are often produced with the best of intentions, he explains that archives create the conditions which they expect to respond. Um, but then he says, like, don't worry, you know, you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Bath archives are useful and good and are a way to preserve what's um, in the present on into the future. However, to adjust the trouble with archives, um, Cohen suggests that his readers keep in mind that a future of submerged cities is a future of unequally distributed suffering, um, of environmental injustice. Katrina and New Orleans taught us that, so does Noah's uh, story in its fullness. By not embracing resignation, we can turn down catastrophe, even if we cannot escape its perturbations. So, um, I take that to mean, uh, you know, inevitably all of us, um, are going to flame out in an apocalyptic way, one way or another, right? Um, and that uh, the, the individual future of all living things is inevitably apocalyptic, and most of us respond to that inevitability through collecting and passing on what's meaningful to us. Uh, we need to continue to understand um, that we have to interrogate uh, the values that we use to determine the difference between like what we what we keep and what we throw away. All right, so that's part one. Uh, and number two. Um, I've chosen in my poster, my sample poster, uh, to illustrate Interstellar. Um, and specifically, the way that uh, Interstellar illustrates several of the key concepts, uh, or concepts key to Cohen's argument. So, um, this response is to living with apocalypse on the horizon. 
um, the way that the movie contracts different types of archives, and finally, um, I assess the relative value of each. All right, so this is just my PD um, two or three draft, and then I would say that in a final draft, um, which I'm handing you with my poster, here's a place that I could um, elaborate on what I've already written. So I want to name the benefits and drawbacks specifically instead of just gesturing to them. All right, and so I finally answered this last question um, here. Um, so I argue, this is me personally, that analyzing representations of Apocalypse and Interstellar gives me a greater understanding of how influential and complex representations of the future can be. So me specifically, I think about the future in terms of my house and my family, um, and that, that seems very like concrete and tactile to me, and yet it is like a set of, is, is a metaphor for the future, and also like what type of metaphor is it? It's archival, right? And so, um, thinking about Cooper um, in Interstellar and thinking about uh, the weird moment where Cooper has to inhabit um, or, or inhabits like the museum of his house um, helps me think about uh, the trouble with conceiving of my own future in terms of a relic um, and instead, I don't know, reconceiving of ways uh, to be more open. All right, something like that. All right, so again, uh, if this is the... The, the prompt for the a media analysis. A thing that we might think about doing today is how do I move from this, um, how, do I, how do I move from the draft, let's say that, uh, sorry, from this draft to a final draft. Both um, the sort of written pitch and in the poster, right? Because you can see how these different components of the pitch would underwrite the way that you want to structure your poster. So one thing that you might want to do is move what was question number three or paragraph three and make that the first paragraph of your pitch. So what would your pitch look like if instead of ending with so what, you know, what, what new information does reading these two texts um, together reveal? Or what new concepts um, does thinking uh, across modalities provide? Go ahead and make that first. And then um, the sentence that came, or the paragraph that came first, make that second. Uh, and then this paragraph, uh, your conclusion or um, some combination, right? So what sorts of um, revision then has to happen here um, if this then is your new opening paragraph. So that's just one suggestion. Um, you're not required to revise that radically. Um, you're welcome to just tighten up um, for the final poster the work that you did in this prompt. But thinking, um, because this is um, 300, 500 words, you want to expand um, in part based on what you already, or what you learn about uh, your project by tacking back and forth between the written and the um, visual. Um, so uh, that's it for that, and I uh, hope that helped.